dogs. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Britt and if you haven't subscribed yet you probably should because I talk about geeky things but today I'm gonna give you guys tips on dogs. So I've owned a dog for 12 years and uh, I grew up with two different breeds of dogs as well as have a third breed of dog in my arsenal um, and they were all very different types of dogs. So I thought it'd be fun for me to kind of give you guys some tips on if you guys are thinking about getting a dog, what maybe to look out for, maybe what to stay away from, and shed some light on some interesting topics. So let's start with why you wanna get a dog and if it's the right time. Because for me, I did not get a dog at the right time. I did, for my mental health, get a dog at the right time. Cosmo is an emotional support animal. Um, he helps me with my depression, he helps me with my anxiety. But when it came to my lifestyle, I really didn't get a dog at the right time. Luckily, I ended up getting the right kind of dog. Now, mind you, I'm not gonna talk about which breeds are aggressive or not aggressive, because that is all about the handler of the dog. But there are certain breeds that are more high strong, that need more exercise, that need more attention, that are more independent, that, that need extra training, or that are really super easy to train all based on how they were bred, even if breeding dogs is not looked upon uh, in favor anymore. And we're gonna talk about mixed breeds in a hot second. Trust me, we'll get there. But make sure that if you're thinking about getting a dog that you can one, afford it. Dogs are expensive, especially if you're going to go in the route of getting a puppy, in which you're not gonna get a neutered or spayed animal. Neutering and spaying is expensive. And there are pet insurances out there, and there is a, veterinarian chain that will help you pay for that by paying for it slowly monthly throughout the course of the year but I do not think that that particular company is one that you should ever use maybe I'll do a story time on that sometime but you have to make sure that you can afford it that you have time for this dog that it is going to be something that fits into your life. Now, mind you, I was still going to school when I got Cosmo. I was living in an apartment, a two bedroom apartment by myself. So I was smart and decided to get one that was on the ground level where I could push him out the patio door in case he really needed to go potty. And that's the other thing too. Are you ready to potty train? Whew. These are all questions that you really need to ask yourself. You gotta have time. You've gotta understand that it's like having a baby. You're going to be getting up in the middle of the night. Be okay with that. That is part of having a puppy if you're gonna go the puppy route. If you're going the adult route, you may not have to get up in the middle of the night as much, but my experience was we always got puppies, so that's my experience. I really can't speak to getting an older dog. Maybe at some point I will get some friends or family members that have had adult dogs that they've adopted and they can kind of speak to that portion. But for right now, what I'm gonna speak about is getting a puppy because that is again, my experience and what I have experience in. But yes, when you first get a puppy, you are going to be getting up in the middle of the night like you do for, an, for a newborn infant. That puppy is gonna have to go potty a lot and you're gonna have to take that dog potty a lot. So let's say your lifestyle is perfect, you're ready to get a dog, you know, you can afford this dog, you're, you have time for this dog, you're ready to do the potty training, you're okay with getting up in the middle of the night. How do you pick a dog? So when I was first looking at getting a dog, I originally wanted to get a St. Bernard. They've been my favorite breed of dog since I was super young and one literally was my babysitter once at a farm, but no apartment in the city of St. Cloud, Minnesota would allow such a big dog on their premises because a lot of apartments have weight limits. So there you go, also look for that. Okay, what kind of dog can you get? Check your apartment's weight limit. So I did find an apartment that allowed a 50 pound dog. So I was like, a golden retriever sounds good. They're my second favorite breed of dog ever since I was a young kid. And I watched Homer Bound for the first time. So I started looking at golden retriever breeders. So that's the next piece. Are you going to get a dog from a breeder or are you gonna get a dog from a shelter? Have pros and cons to both. If you're gonna get a puppy, some of the cons when it comes to getting a dog from a shelter do go away. Um, I knew that I wanted Wanted a puppy because I knew that I wanted to be the dog's only trainer and I knew I wanted to get a dog from a breeder because I knew that I wanted to be the dog's only trainer. I do get a lot of backlash for ever talking about getting a dog from a breeder or ever saying that breeders can be good things. They can be guys, it's okay. I don't agree necessarily with the adopt, don't shop. Those dogs are still gonna be born. Those dogs are still gonna need homes. I was traumatized by a dog being put down because he barked too much once. 
not one of my dogs. We were actually there with our cat and the dog was gonna be put down. My mom and I did everything we could to stop this dog from being, being put down. It was a golden retriever. Golden retrievers are just vocal dogs sometimes. My golden is incredibly vocal. He talks all the time. He barks, he growls, he talks. It's just what he does. It's what dogs do. They let you know they need you by talking to you. So when people give me backlash a lot of times it's, well, it's because you, you killed a dog. You essentially killed a dog because you got a dog from, from a breeder. Well, how did I know that Cosmo wasn't gonna end up being one of those dogs eventually anyway? I, if you wanna get a dog from a shelter, more power to you. If you wanna get a dog from a breeder, do your research, but more power to you. And that's my next thing. Always do research. There are some shysty breeders out there. Puppy mills are still a thing. Be careful, even though dogs from puppy mills still deserve loving homes as well, but, dog, but puppies from puppy mills are generally not great dogs because they come with a lot of health issues, they are malnourished, they are usually aggressive in a way just because they were not handled properly initially at the beginning of their lives. They really don't have a lot of great social skills because they were not socialized properly. It's a whole thing, but just do your research. If you can find a breeder that's also a vet tech, great. That's what ended up happening with me. I found a breeder that was also a vet tech and she raised the dogs like her own until they were ready to go home to their new home. So like I said, I am I don't judge either way. If you're gonna get a dog from a shelter, be careful, especially if you're getting an older dog. If you're gonna get a dog from a, from a breeder, do your research on the breeder and be careful. Either way, just be careful. This is a living creature we're talking about, a living being, something that is going to be part of your family for the next 10 to 20 years, depending on the breed you get. This is also, we're gonna talk about the notion of what breed should you get? That is completely up to you, except you have to take into account your lifestyle, where you live, how big, how big your yard is, is your yard fenced in, and what kind of training are you gonna be doing? <laughs> or how much training are you gonna be doing? Or are you not gonna do any training at all? Train your dog. One of my biggest pet peeves are people that have little dogs. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like little dogs. Like a lot of my friends have little dogs. A lot of my friends want to get little dogs. So I apologize if I'm about to offend you, but here's the thing. I don't like little dogs because more often than not, you have owners that have little dogs that don't think little dogs need training, that only big dogs need training. Little dogs actually need more training than big dogs because big dogs don't get away with as much crap. <laughs> Train your dog. I got a golden retriever uh, mostly because I liked the breed, but also I did a lot of research on the golden retriever. I got books, read them and tried really hard to understand the breed so that I didn't have as many surprises. But either way, you have to make sure that if you're living in an apartment and that means you don't have a yard, that you get a dog that's okay with not having to need as much exercise or you have the time to give that dog the exercise. Where like where we live right now, I could get pretty much any breed of dog I'd want because we've got this huge fence in backyard. I think we have a half acre back there for this dog to just run around and have fun and get in trouble, dig some holes, and nobody would notice because our yard is ridiculously wild. <laughs> but either way, it really depends on what kind of yard you have. Fenced in, big backyard, you can get really any kind of dog you want. If you have a small apartment, maybe not a greyhound. So always take into consideration where you live and also you have to look at the temperament of the dog. Golden retrievers, super easy to train. You know, so that was one thing that I did right, because had I gotten the St. Bernard, I think I would have been up shit creek without a paddle because of the fact that they're really not great at being trained unless you start them super young. And I was stupid. I was a stupid beginning dog owner. I didn't take Cosmo to training class until he was nearly a year old. That would have been far too old for a St. Bernard to ever really listen and want to learn. Cosmo ended up being an incredibly easy dog to train because that's the retriever breed itself. Now this is where people are going to be asking, but what about mixed breeds? Mixed breeds, you don't know what the dog is. You don't know what the temperament is going to be, how well or easily this dog will be trained. If you start young enough, it doesn't matter. A dog is going to learn, except for maybe a bulldog, but maybe I'll get together with my friend Crystal one day and she can tell you how easy it is to train a bulldog. 
When I worked in the pet industry, I asked many people with mixed breeds if they were ever going to get DNA tests done on their dog to find out what breeds they have. And a lot of them would always say no, because it really doesn't matter. I held in a lot to tell them it kind of does actually. Now again, it doesn't matter when it comes to aggression or non-aggression. I hate the idea that German Shepherds and Pit Bulls and Doberman Pinschers and Rottweilers have such bad reputations because they're, no, they're known to be the aggressive breeds, when in actuality, Golden Retrievers are the dogs with the biggest bite ratio for two reasons. One, because they are so overbred that there are so many Golden Retrievers out in the world, and so it's a lot easier to have more bites from more dogs. And two, Golden Retrievers are super mouthy, especially when they're young. They like to have things in their mouths. They like to chew on things. Cosmo rips apart his toys like nobody's business. He bites me constantly when we're playing. He doesn't mean it by aggression, but still. Anyway, it has nothing to do with aggression. It has everything to do with the temperament of the dog. Does the dog need a lot of exercise? Is the dog going to be a herding mentality dog? Is the dog going to go out and kill baby ducks at the lake? I am so traumatized by that. Our Siberian Husky did that once, killed a bunch of baby ducklings at the lake. The lake we lived on, we tried so hard to save them. Did not happen. I was afraid of him for a little bit after that. <laughs> Either way, you need to understand the temperament of the dog or how easy the dog is going to learn. So if a dog is part St. Bernard, you're gonna know you're gonna need to train it from a very young age. If the dog is part is mostly golden retriever, you know you're in the clear because heck, I can still teach Cosmo to count. We're still working on three. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> it's a lot of work teaching your dog how to count. But either way, you just need to know the temperament of the dog. Is the dog part greyhound? Are you, is the dog part cattle dog? Are you gonna have to worry about the dog running like a Siberian Husky? Jack, we had a lot of problems with Jack, it's fine. But that's just it. You need to understand the temperament of the dog. You need to understand what makes up the dog and what that temperament is gonna look like in regards to training, in regards to your lifestyle, how much exercise you're gonna have to give the dog. What are you looking at for a lifespan? What are you thinking of when it comes to how you train and when you train and how often you're going to train the dog? Please train your dog. So yes, like I said, I will never judge anybody if they get a dog from a shelter or a breeder, just be careful. But if you're gonna get a mixed breed, please just spend the money to get the DNA test done so that you know what makes up your dog. It's not gonna change how you feel about your dog because that's what a lot of people would say. It's not gonna change anything. It's not gonna change how I feel about the dog. And a lot of people may be afraid to do it because if you have a pit bull in the mix, they're not gonna be a lot of apartments. And if you have a pit bull in the mix, your house insurance goes up because again, apparently pit bulls are incredibly aggressive. When, actual when actuality, all pit bulls that I have ever met have been the sweetest freaking dogs on the face of the planet because it's about the handler not about the dog. This is just incredibly important. And I can't stress that enough. If you're gonna get a mixed breed dog, try and get the DNA test done with a vet and make sure you know what makes up the breed, what breed the dog is just so you can understand the temperament a little bit better and prepare yourself. Be careful. That's my biggest thing. You're, you're bringing a living thing into your life. Just be careful. Training. Training a dog from a very young age is super important. Cosmo did learn sit pretty much the day I brought him home so I could take this picture. Isn't he cute? <laughs> but at the same time, training to be a, not just an obedient dog, but training to be a polite dog is incredibly important. Learning how to say leave it, learning, having the dog learn to come, having the dog learn to heal, having the dog learn to sit and wait for their food, learn to, you know, handling the food while the dog is eating the food so that they don't become food aggressive, that they're okay if somebody walks up to them. Making sure that your kids, if you have them, understand not to pull and climb on the dog. It's also about training you. Matter of fact, training classes are not for the dog. They're for the owner. They're for the owner to understand how to train a dog. Also, be careful, living thing, be careful when you're choosing where to go for training classes. It has been scientifically proven that the best way to train a dog is through positive reinforcement. And so positive reinforcement training is always the way to go. So always do positive reinforcement training. Always make sure that wherever you are going, it is positive reinforcement. Clicker training is really great. I taught Cosmo clicker training and it went beautifully. 
I know I used to work for both of these companies, but I cannot sing their praises enough when it comes to their pet training. I have done both their pet trainings in the past. PetSmart Petco make really great pet training. This is not sponsored by PetSmart. This is not sponsored by Petco. I am not affiliated with either company anymore and haven't been for years but I will still sing their praises where necessary and they do positive training and I really like their training methods and Cosmo has done really, really well in both scenarios. Plus it's a really great way for the dogs to socialize and make sure that they don't become nervous around other dogs. It's super, super important. The other piece of training, which a lot of people look at as really cruel, actually really isn't and that is crate training. So crate training uh, looks cruel, but it isn't. You get a crate, a metal crate. Don't get a foldable crate like I did because that did not go over well when Cosmo learned he could walk around the apartment inside of it. <sighs> Maybe I should just do a story from time about when, when Cosmo was a puppy. You get a metal crate that is essentially big enough for the dog to stand up and turn around in. It shouldn't be any bigger than that and the dog is going to be in there when the dog is sleeping, when you are out of the house, that's where the dog is going to be. Cruel, looks like it, is it? No, why do you do this? It's one of those situations where the dog is going to seriously try not to soil the cage because it's not gonna to wanna to sit in its own urine or its own feces. So if the dog can't go to a certain corner and poop and pee and then go to the other corner and sleep, then you're in good shape to potty training the dog. This is in no way meant to be cruel to the animal. It is essentially there to help you train your dog while you're not able to actually train the dog because you're unconscious or you're at work. When you're getting ready to go to work, you feed the dog about 10 minutes later, you take the dog out to go potty, positively reinforce the dog by giving him a treat when he goes potty, take him back inside the house and put him inside his crate and then leave for the day. When you get back, take the dog out, take the dog potty immediately, bring it in positively enforced when the dog goes potty outside, bring the dog in. This, every hour when you're home and every hour when you're asleep is the best way to potty train a puppy. It's a lot of work, trust me. Like I said, make sure you're ready to do this. Make sure you're ready to take the dog and train it properly. The last bit of training that I'll always, that I always recommend to people, this is what I did with Cosmo and it works tremendously well because dogs are pack learners. Dogs are also going to learn hierarchy based on when they eat. So don't feed your dog first. Never feed your dog first. You eat first. You finish eating and then whatever animal is next on the docket gets to eat. So for example, when Cosmo was a puppy, I ate, then I fed Corvette, and then I fed Cosmo. This taught Cosmo from a very young age that me and Corvette were above him. Corvette already made sure he was aware of that by attacking him when he was a seven pound puppy, but he never stepped outside of those bounds when I was feeding them that way. Nowadays, it goes me, then Cosmo, then Nova. So Cosmo understands that Nova's new in the house and Nova's not above him. And Nova understands that she's not above him because she doesn't play that game like Corvette did. <laughs> That's the last bit of training that I'm going to mention in this video. I'm not a training expert. Um, like I said, this is from my experience and what I've learned from reading and what I learned from working in the pet industry for so long. Those are my biggest tips for training. Crate training, positive reinforcement, and feeding in proper hierarchy order. All right, so let's say you're ready to get a dog, you're ready to train, you've picked training, you're gonna positively train your dog, you're gonna crate train your dog, you're going to make sure you're, you're setting hierarchy by feeding schedule. You've also done the research on what you wanna do. Do you wanna get a dog from a breeder or a shelter? Okay, now what? Now you prepare your house for the dog. You're gonna wanna make sure you have obviously a food bowl and a water bowl for the dog. You're gonna wanna make sure you have toys. One of my biggest recommendations to people when you're looking for toys, get blue toys. I don't care if you gender color and you are getting a girl dog, get blue toys. Dogs in their color blindness are red, green color blind. So blue is oftentimes the most intense color that they can see. So it's a lot easier for them to play with blue toys or for them to have blue items. So if you can, whatever the dog is aiming for, try and make it blue. It's just a lot easier for the dog to notice it. It's something that I hold very true to my heart um, just because that's how they see. Um, so always aim for getting blue toys. I always aim to getting Cosmo blue toys or natural looking toys because he is a golden retriever and so I do like to get him beavers and ducks and 
things like that, um, which are things that golden retrievers would see in the wild and or would see out hunting that are in the wild. Um, and therefore, you know, I like getting him those things. I should get him a kilt because golden retrievers are Scottish. I already annoy him with hats too much. The next thing that you want to make sure you get, obviously, are going to be collar and a, a collar and leash. Um, and when they're a puppy, you should really get them harness versus a collar. When they're a big dog like Cosmo, who doesn't pull, uh, getting a walking on a collar is perfectly fine. Do not, please, for everything that I am, I plead of you not to get a choker and not to get a prong collar. I did get Cosmo a prong collar. I still have it. It is in the garage and I need to get rid of it because I'm so angry with who I was when I was a brand new dog owner. I've learned so much since then. Having dogs that pull, especially little dogs, that can really damage their trachea. Even just having a normal collar if they're pulling can damage their trachea. So please just get them a harness when they're young. And like I said, if you're training a dog properly and the dog is walking beside you as they should be, or slightly behind you as they should be, because that means they respect you as the leader. Mind you, this comes from somebody who had a dog, had a German Shepherd that grew up with her that always pulled and a Siberian Husky that ran away a lot. So there was that. But I, again, I have learned so much. Cosmo walks either right beside me or slightly behind me because he, he, he respects me as the leader of the walk. Harnesses are so much safer for dogs and there are special harness leads that you can get that will help with the pulling that are really effective and really, really helpful. That even I had a kid, a three-year-old kid walking their dog that pulls around Petco once and the parents bought it in a heartbeat because the dog literally can't pull with it. So there's that. Uh, the other thing that I am very much against, unless you are in a large field where it is okay for the dog to have a little bit more freedom because you're not necessarily at an off-leash dog park, but you're at a place where the dog can have a little bit more freedom but still needs to be leashed, do not get a retractable leash, please, for the love of God. Can we not get retractable leashes? Just get a regular leash. A three-foot leash is all you need. Do not get retractable leashes. They are dangerous. You do not have enough control over your dog. And if you do not have a well-trained dog, you and your dog would be in a lot of danger. So please, no retractable leashes. I hate seeing them when I'm out on walks with Cosmo. I hate it. They are not okay. They are so dangerous. Just say no to, to retractable leashes. And please don't be that person in the comments that goes, I love a retractable leash and I'm just fine. No to retractable leashes, no. There are some dogs that you can train to use a litter box. Actually, you can train any dog to use a litter box if you so desire. Um, so if that is you, if you live in a super cold climate and you have a smaller dog, it may not be the worst idea to maybe get the dog to learn how to use a litter box. Not like a cat litter box, it's actually like a fake lawn. This actually works really well in apartments too. I've thought about that a lot that, you know, if I were to ever get another dog, I'd just basically get the ones that you can connect and make like half of my balcony. <laughs> if I ever live in an apartment again, make half of my balcony just that fake grass because it's not gonna be a bad thing and the dog can go out there, but you can do that. Some other options as well um, would be potty pads for puppies. What I often recommend for that is to put the potty pad next to the door so the dog is instinctively going to the door whenever he has to go potty, which will alert you to knowing that he needs to go potty. For me, I just simply taught Cosmo the term wanna go potty, and if he has to go potty, he gets excited. He, he alerts me to that. So if he's coming over to me whining and I say, do you have to go potty or wanna go potty? he'll immediately start jumping around and getting excited. It's just super, super important to make sure you're focusing on training. So making sure you have the right kind of treats as well. Having biscuits is great for a little snack here and there. Having dental treats is really great as well. I feed Cosmo and Nova dental treats every single night. Getting a dog toothbrush is not a bad idea. Getting all kinds of things that you can groom your dog with, nail clippers, shampoo, whether that's a dry shampoo or just a spray or a full-on shampoo, 
remember not to bathe your dog super often just because they actually need those natural oils and if you bathe them too often it's going to be a problem but if they get muddy obviously you need to bathe them especially if they're inside dogs. The other thing that I've often recommended to people just because this did become a problem with Cosmo when he was in his chewing phase, get stuff that tastes bad, put that on anything electric cord wise. Cosmo ate through my laptop cord once while it was plugged in. He got a nice electric jolt, did not like that, never did it again. But at the same time, it was a real hassle to have to get a new charging cord for my laptop at the time. So just be aware of those things. You have to baby proof for a puppy just as much as you have to baby proof for a baby. So just be aware of that. That's really all I've got. If you guys have any questions that about things that you want me to elaborate on or questions that you have that I maybe didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a follow up video. I do want to do one about cats as well, since obviously care for cats is very different than care for dogs. When it comes to dog food, that is such a hot topic for me. <laughs> Um, so if you guys want me to do a full video on dog foods to stay away from, dog foods to take into consideration, let me know in the comments below and I will do that video as well. But that is all I have for you guys today. I am done taking up your guys' time. If you guys want to see my most recent video, you guys can click right here. If you want to see what the algorithm thinks is the best video for you to see on my channel, you can go ahead and click this one right here. Otherwise, you can click here to subscribe. Please share this video, like this video, Comment down below what you thought of this video. Tell me if you want to see more like this, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.